the shadowy conglomerate behind LBC. We're going to read into this more from Byline Times, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an article from Byline Times with the headline of the shadowy conglomerate behind LBC. Francis Coppola looks at the rise of the global and reveals how much of the UK's radio network is controlled by an opaque offshore entity. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share across social media so others are notified of this video. So as some of you may have been aware, a video of mine from LBC regarding this um, Fun sang Tiga Miska, and I know I've mispronounced the name. You don't need to remind me in the comments down below. I'm never going to get it right either way. So, but I'm sure the point that I was making about that video and the coverage from it made per was many with the vast majority understanding about my feelings behind it. And um, this uh, piece here from Byline Times, who followed up on that story, I think is a very important one to add here about what's really going on behind LBC that may give us some indications some some answers to her disappearance as well. Now, I speculated that perhaps maybe that she had signed an NDA, which is why she hasn't spoken out, and she still hasn't spoken out at the time of this recording. There's, yes, and I'm also aware that there was also, that she was her contract was coming up as well, which one some people had made in the comments. I was aware of that as well. I don't I can't remember. I'm sure that's what I referenced in, in the video, but if I didn't, I apologise. Um, but it's still raises a lot of questions about the integrity of leading Britain's conversation and their and their how should we say diversity that they're trying to be because you have so-called people on left and there seems to be me more more becoming a bit more right-wing uh, journalists coming in now as opposed to those on the left and I feel like it's 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 a lot harder to take them seriously than it used to be. I still listen to some of it. I know many people who, who screamed in the comments that they, they're going to boycott LBC out, out of this. She's not going to get reinstated, guys. Let's, you know, let, let the reality is um, she's gone and she's not going to come back. But eventually, at some point, we will hear her story and we're going to be told the reasons why that's going to be happened, uh, why this happened. We don't know when it's going to happen, but at some point, the story's, a story's going to come out. Because people will want to know the truth of what happened. Why did she? Why was she let go? Or why did she go in the way she went? Why was she not giving her flowers and saying thank you for your time? These are a lot of questions there uh, that we didn't get answers to. So let's read what Byline Times has to say about the shaggery conglomerate behind leading Britain's conversation. So LBC is in the news and not in a good way. A few weeks ago, it took uh, Sankiga Miska off the air without warning or explanation, eventually replacing her with Vanessa Feltz and Ali Mitchell as part of a wider schedule reshuffle. The unprecedented listener backlash followed her uh, defensorization has focused attention on LBC's shadowy parent company. What is Global Media and Entertainment Limited? Who owns it? And why should the public care about it? This story starts in 2008. When a millionaire bookmaker and racehorse owner, Michael Taylor Tabor, bought his son Ashley a media company. Although Ashley has never held a senior job in media company, he was already running a successful talent agency, Global Talent. And so becoming the sole managing director of a media company perhaps didn't seem much that much of a stretch. So this here on the left, that's Ashley Tabor King on the left of Global Media and Entertainment opening the new Heart Broadcasting Centre in Milton Keynes back in 2011 there. Backed by his father's money, Ashley went on an accreditation spree, first purchasing a Chrysalis, Radi Chrysalis Radio, then fighting a fierce battle to take over GCAT Media and its network of FM channels. By the end of 2008, This Is Global on Ashley's company was then known had acquired an enormous spewing portfolio of radio stations and brands. Ashley recruited a team of experienced industry professionals, headed by Stephen Merrion, a former managing director of the Mail on Sunday. Already warning signs are there. 
who became the group's chief executive. The team reorganized the company's uh, offerings into seven core brands, The Heart, Capital Smooth, Gold Classic, FM, uh, FM, Radio X, and LBC. This is Global, continued to expand through its acquisition by GMG Radio in 2012. In 2017, it changed its name uh, to Global Media and Entertainment Limited and embarked on another buying spree, this time focused on outdoor advertising, in which it quickly became a market leader. And in 2021, Global entered its podcast space, buying a hosting distribution and modernization service and launching several podcasts with well-known hosts. Such as James O'Brien's, um, uh, James O'Brien has one, and and several others, of course. Global's rapid expansion was entirely financed by debt, and the debt has never been repaid. Ooh, most of it takes the form of long-term shareholders' loans from its Jersey-based parent. Global Radio Group Limited shareholder loans are an alternative to equity finance. Instead of issuing additional shares for its shareholders to buy, the company borrows from its shareholders and the shareholders receive interest payments on those loans in lieu of those dividends which had received, which it would have received on shares. Since interest payments are made before tax while dividends are paid for tax, shareholders' loans are a way of avoiding tax. Mm. This is very dodgy. Interest rates on shareholder loans are typically very high, high since they are subordinate to the company's other debts and thus more likely not to be repaid in the event of insolvency. The high interest rates provide shareholders with a generous steam of cash and they can also bleed a company dry. In Global's cases, that's exactly what they do and it appears to be intentional. Interest payments on Global's borrowing are so large that the company has made a pre-tax loss in every year but one since its founding. In 2018, it's delivered a pre-tax profit, but then borrowed lots more money from its parent to fund the acquisition of two outdoor advertising companies. The profit disappeared, never to be seen again. Until 2017, Global was set uh, to was about was able to set off almost all of its losses against tax. As a result, it paid no UK tax. It even recorded tax credits known as a deferred tax asset on its balance sheet. By 2016, these were worth over £5.2 million. However, in 2016, HMRC restricted corporations' ability to offset interest payments against tax. This was to discourage base shifting the practice of using debt and intercompany transfers to squirrel away profits offshore, thus avoiding UK corporate taxation. Global was caught by this legislation and since then has incurred corporation tax on its pre-tax losses. But it is still finding ways of not paying tax. In 2017, it used the £5.2 million tax credits built up prior to 2017 to offset its tax liabilities. In effect, HMRC pays these taxes, and by 2023, Global was reportedly nearing £38.8 million of deferred tax liabilities. That's unpaid tax to you and me mainly arising from the way it chooses to calculate the future value of intangible assets. Some of its shareholder loans have been issued as tradable notes in recognised stock exchange in 2013. Corporate Watch pointed out that these notes are, were a vehicle for tax avoidance. Global owners can receive the interest payments of tax-free because they have issued the loans as uh, quoted euro bonds. Normally, when a UK company pays interest to a non-UK company, it has to withhold 20% of the payment and give it to the UK tax authorities. But if the loans are issued as quoted euro bonds on a recognised stock exchange such as the Channel Islands or the Cayman Islands, they benefit from an exemption, meaning no withhold tax is taken off. For in brackets, a euro bond is a bond issued outside the jurisdiction of the country whose current, uh, currency it is uh, denominated. So there's a lot of tax dodging here as well about this company. Global ignored corporate watch criticism and after heavy lobbying from finance industry, HMIC decided not to close this loophole. Ten years later, Global had 1.35 billion of tradable notes bearing interest of 12 to 15 percent. That's an awful lot of cash paid and tax avoided. 
a debt a Latin corporate structure didn't just minimize tax bills but also keeps costs down. Several media industry sources have told me that executives face with demands for pay rise points to persistent loss losses arising from ex ex I can't say that word sorry extolian intercompany interest charges and cry. We can't afford it. We're really struggling. Tax avoiding wage screening structures of this kind are very common. Despite repeated attempts by tax authorities across the world to clamp down on aggressive avoidance schemes and base shifting, corporations like Global can still reduce tax bills and wage costs by moving money around. But from January 2024, a minimum global corporation tax of rate of 15% will apply. Global's 2023 accounts highlight this as a factor that may affect future tax charge. So, the party may soon be over for Global and its tax avoiding parent. But who owns Global Parent? So offshore structures are notably opaque, so it's difficult to identify the ultimate owner. So according to the corporate watch, the Global Radio Group Limited, Jersey is 99% owned by a company called Global Radio Worldwide Limited, in brackets British Virgin Island, with the other 1% personally owned by Ashley Talbar King. However, the UK's company's house website shows that Michael Tubber is listed as a person with significant influence over Global Media and Entertainment Limited. As this usually means a controlled shareholding, it means likely that Michael Tubber is the ultimate owner and, as a resident of Monaco, he is not liable for UK tax. Global's dominance is the UK's commercial radio industry that gives it considerable control over what the public hears. For example, in 2015, the Swiss subsidy of the UK bank HSBC admitted it helped wealthy clients hide assets from tax authorities. Global instructed all its radio stations not to report this news story as it broke. After listeners complained, Ofcom investigated but declined that Global had good editorial reasons for delaying reporting for four days. Neither Ofcom nor Global have revealed what those reasons were. Sounds like to me some money was moved around during those four days, I'm just going to allege. You can see what's going on here, can't you? But surely this was an important public interest story. What editorial reasons could possibly override the rights of people of the UK to know about it? Company house records show that at the time HSBC held a charge over global assets as security against borrowing. Was this a factor? We, the public, have a right to know. Regulators have attempted to restrict Global's dominance. In 2008, the Competition Markets Authority forced Global to sell some of its radio stations it had acquired from GCAP. And in 2012, it demanded that Global sell seven radio stations after a fierce legal battle. Global eventually agreed to sell parts of its network to the Irish broadcaster Communico Corp, but it retained the brand's name. Communico Corp pays Global a license fee for their use. Is that really competition? Sounds like to me they have far too much control over the radio waves in the UK, doesn't it? Neither Ofcom nor the CMA have addressed the deep malines in the UK's radio industry that Global's dominance causes. In a healthy industry, a listener who disliked the editorial line of one company could easily switch to another. And a president and a president presenter, sorry, let go by one media organisation could quickly find a home in another. But the UK's radio industry is now exceedingly contra conceded. Basically it's in part basically it's more difficult. Basically if you're not in if you're not in the family, if you get kicked out of that family, it's much harder for you to find one in the UK essentially. The competition that disputes uh, disciplines radio providers have been replaced with oligarchies. Global is not own is not the only company whose structure is principally designed to enrich its offshore owners rather than serve the public interest. But in its UK radio industry, it is by far the largest. Its dominance is bad for lis listeners, bad for workers, bad for the UK, and it should be broken up. Byline Times asked Global to respond to these observations, but has not received reply by the time of this publication. This was written by Francis Copper, is an independent financial analysis writer and speaker for those who uh, wanted to know who made this beautiful piece, which I think is very, very good indeed. I said before about how important it is 
for media to be reformed in such a way that is in the interest of the British public, for the public in general, regardless of who you are and where you come from. Truth really does matter, and journalists, presenters and whatnot need to be held to account if they are found to mislead or misjudge people down a direction that is not in the interest of the public. It's important that people are told the truth about things. Now, I've said before on my YouTube channel that I'm not a perfect person and that I don't always get everything right. And I always say that whatever you read, whatever you listen to, what newspaper, what YouTube channel, what radio broadcast, I always tell people to take it with a pinch of salt because you never know how truthful it is. The only thing that is more truthful is what you see with your own eyes in the real world. That is the only truth that really is. But I say about media reform, and I've talked about it, how important it is for the for journalists and for the newspaper organisations when you see the damage that they have been causing, certain ones that are providing information that is not really beneficial to you, not being as accurate and clear about these things. Now I'm questioning whether or not forever it's about with the radios as well. And it really does seem like to me that as time passes on, that perhaps as the new generations come in, more and more people are pushing away than ever before from the likes of mainstream media to looking online for themselves the knowledge and information that they want to learn rather than taking it on board from the likes of the BBC, the Sky News, for example, on TV or the likes of GB News or what reading something like the or what they say in the newspapers with regards to like from the Daily Mail, the Sun, the Express, the Telegraph just a few examples or even the daily mirror considering it's a left-wing supporter of labor it makes puts people off knowing that they are not if people know that they are not being given fair accurate information what these media outlets, uh, what these organizations are saying and if you're getting that the same kind of thing within within a radio show within a radio program that's owned under one one brand one global company owning all of these multiple companies these multiple radio stations it does question their integrity it questions whether or not they're giving you fair and accurate information and it's right that you should ask those questions about whatever radio program you listen to whatever newspaper you read one of the things that i try to do uh, on this channel is when i try to give news here i try to be as diverse as i can I have covered stories from the Telegraph. I've covered stories from the Financial Times. I've covered stories mainly a lot from the Guardian, as you guys know. But when I cover world news, I try to be as diverse as I can. And yes, absolutely, I should be. I, there's always need for me to be more as diverse as I possibly can. But I try to be as informative as I can to you all on this channel. I'm not perfect in any way, shape, or form. But I hope that what I do here on this channel and the information that I provide to you guys does help provide some context and some thought about the kind of news that you guys choose you guys and girls choose to take in whether you want to accept what is told and read to you or not but what do you guys think what do you guys make of this story what do you guys make of lbc what do you guys make of global media what do you guys make of the fact that there is still no silence on on the, the on her disappearance still what do you guys make of all of this? And how does it make you feel about media in overall? And what do you think should be done about this? Let me know your thoughts and more on all this in the comment section down below. If you found this video informative, please hit the like button. We greatly appreciate it. Share this across social media so others are notified of this video. And if you like what I do here, please subscribe because it really does help support the channel. And if you want to go one step further and financially support me, and the work that I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p. And you can even join me on other social media for exclusive content such as Rumble, Patreon and Facebook. All the links are down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.